Man called Ove, chapter 21. <clears throat> a man who is Ove in countries where they play foreign music in restaurants. Of course, the bus tour was her idea. Ove couldn't see the use of it. If they had to go anywhere, why not just take the, if, excuse me, if they had to go anywhere, why not just take the sob? But Sonia insisted that buses were romantic, and that sort of thing was incredibly important, Ove had learned. So that's how it ended up. Even though everyone in Spain seemed to think they were somehow exceptional because they went around yawning and drinking and playing foreign music in restaurants and going to bed in the middle of the day. Ove did his best not to like any of it, but Sonia got so worked up about it all that in the end it inevitably affected him too. She laughed so loudly when he held her that he felt it through his whole body. Not even Ove could avoid liking it. They stayed in a little hotel with a little pool and a little restaurant, run by a man whose name, as Ove understood it, was Jose. It was spelled Jose, but it seemed people weren't too particular about pronunciation in Spain. Jose couldn't speak any Swedish, but he was very interested in speaking anyway. Sonia had a little book in which she looked things up so she couldn't, so she could say things like sunset and ham in Spanish. Ove felt it didn't stop being the butt end of a pig just because you said it in another way, but he never mentioned this. On the other hand, he tried to point out to her that she shouldn't give money to the beggars in the street as they'd only buy schnapps with it, but she kept doing it. They can do what they like with the money, she said. When Ove protested, she just smiled and took his big hands in hers and kissed them, explaining that when a person gives to another person, it's not just the receiver who's blessed, the giver. On the third day, she went to bed in the middle of the day because that was what people did in Spain, she said, and one should adopt the local customs of a place. Ove suspected it was not so much about customs as her own preferences, and this suited her very well as an excuse. She already slept 16 hours out of 24 since she got pregnant. Ove occupied himself by going for walks. He took the road leading past the hotel into the village. All the houses were made of stone, he noted. Many of them didn't appear to have thresholds under the front doors, and there were no decent window seals to be seen. Ove thought it slightly barbaric. One couldn't bloody build houses like this. He was on his way back to the hotel when he saw Chausse leaning over a smoking brown car at the side of the road. Inside sat two children and a very old woman with a shawl around her head. She didn't seem to be feeling very well. Chausse caught sight of Ove and waved at him in an agitated manner with something like panic in his eyes. Senor, he called out to Ove the way he'd done every time he'd spoken to him since their arrival. Ove assumed it meant Ove in Spanish, but he hadn't checked something in his phrase book so carefully. Chausse pointed at the car and gesticulated wildly at Ove again. But he stuck his hands in his trouser pockets and stopped at a safe distance with a watchful look on his face. Hospital, Chausset shouted again and pointed at the old woman in the car. In fact, she didn't look in very good shape, Ove reaffirmed to himself. <coughs> Chausset pointed to the woman and pointed to the hood at the smoking engine, repeated despairingly, Hospital, hospital. Ove cast his evaluating eye on the spectacle and finally drew the conclusion that this smoking Spanish mass manufactured car must be known as a hospital. He leaned over the engine and peered down. Didn't look so complicated, he thought. Hospital, Chose said again and nodded several times and looked quite worried. But we didn't know what he was expected to say to that. Clearly, the whole matter of car makes was considered quite important in Spain. Certainly, Ove could empathize with that. Sob, he said, therefore pointing demonstrative chest. Chose stared in puddles and at him for a moment, then he put it himself. Chose, I wasn't bloody asking for your name. I was only saying, Ove started saying, but he stopped himself when he was met on the other side of the hood by a stare as glazed as an inland lake. Obviously, this Chausset guy's, this Chausset's grasp of Swedish was even worse than Ove's Spanish. Ove sighed and looked with some concern at the children in the back seat. They were holding the old woman's hands and looked quite terrified. Ove looked down at the engine again, and he rolled up his shirt sleeves in motion for Chausset to move out of the way. Within ten minutes, they were back on the road, and Ove had never seen anyone so relieved to have his car fixed. However much she flicked around through a little phrase book, Sonia never found out the exact reason why they weren't charged for any of the food they ate in Jose's restaurant that week. But she laughed until she was positively simmering every time the little Spanish man who owned the restaurant lit up like a sun when he saw Ove, held out his arms and exclaimed, Señor Saab. Her daily naps and Ove's walks became a ritual. On the second day, Ove walked past a man putting up a fence and stopped to explain that this was absolutely the wrong way to do it. The man couldn't understand a word of what he was saying, so Ove decided in the end that it would be quicker to show him how. On the third day, he built a new exterior wall on a church building with the assistance of the village priest. On the fourth day, he went with Chausset to find a feet to a field outside the village, where he helped one of Chausset's friends pull out a horse that had got stuck in a muddy ditch. Many years later, it occurred to Sonia to ask him about all that. Mauve at last told her she shook her head both long and hard. So I was sneaking. You, so I was sleeping. You sneaked out and helped people in need and mended their fences. People can say whatever they like about you, Ove. 
captured the strangest superhero I ever heard about. On the bus on the way home from Spain, she put Ove's hand on her belly, and he felt the child kicking faintly, as if someone had prodded the palm of his hand through a very thick oven mitt. They sat there for several hours, feeling little bumps. Ove didn't say anything, but Sonia saw the way he wiped his eyes with the back of his hand when he rose from his seat and mumbled something about needing the bath back bathroom. It was the happiest week of Ove's life. It was destined to be followed by the very unhappiest. Chapter 22, a man called Ove and someone in a garage. Ove and the cat sit in silence in the sob outside the hospital. Stop looking at me as if this is my fault, says Ove to the cat. The cat looks back at him as if it isn't angry but disappointed. It wasn't really the plan that he would be sitting outside this hospital again. He hates hospitals, after all. Now he's bloody been here three times in less than a week. It's not right and proper, but no other choice was available to him because the day went to pot from the very beginning. It started with Ove and the cat. During their daily inspection, they discovered that the sign forbidding vehicular traffic within the residential area had been run over. This inspired such colorful profanities from Ove that the cat looked quite embarrassed. Ove marched off in fury and emerged moments later with his snow shovel. When he stopped, looking towards Anita and Rune's house, his jaws clamped so hard that they made a creaking sound. The cat looked at him accusingly. It's not my fault the old sod went and got sold, he said more firmly. And the cat didn't seem to find this to be in any way an acceptable explanation. Ove pointed at it with a snow shovel. You think this is the first time I've had a run-in with the council? That decision about Rune, you think they'll, they've actually come... Do you think they've actually come to a real conclusion about it? They never will. We'll go to appeal, and they'll drag it out and put it through their shitty bureaucratic grind. You understand? I think it'll happen quickly, but it takes months. Years. I think I'm going to stick around here just because that old sod went all helpless. The cat didn't answer. You don't understand. Understand? Well, they hissed and turned around. He felt the cat's eyes on his back. As he marched inside. That is not the reason why Ove and the cat are sitting in the sob in the parking area outside the hospital, but it does have a fairly direct connection with Ove staying there shoveling snow when that journalist woman in her slightly too large green jacket turned up outside his house. Ove, she asked behind him, as if she was concerned that he might have changed his identity since she last came here to disturb him. Ove continued shoveling without in any way acknowledging her presence. I only want to ask you a few questions, she tried. Ask them somewhere else. I don't want them here, Ove answered, scattering snow about him in a way that made it difficult to tell whether he was shoveling or digging. But I only want... To she said, but she was interrupted by Ove and the cat going into the house and slamming the door in her face. Ove and the cat squatted in the hall and waited for her to leave, but she didn't leave. She started banging on the door and calling out, but you're a hero. She's absolutely psychotic, that woman, said Ove to the cat. The cat didn't disagree. And she carried on banging and shouting even louder. Ove didn't know what to do, so he threw the open door and put his finger over his mouth, hushing her as if in the next moment he was going to point out that this was actually a library. She attempted to grin up at his face, waving something that Ove instinctively perceived as a camera of some sort, or something else. It wasn't so easy knowing what cameras looked like anymore in this bloody society. Then she tried to step into his hall. Maybe she shouldn't have done that. Ove raised his big hand and pushed her back over the threshold as a reflex, so that she almost fell headfirst into the snow. I don't want anything, said Ove. She re regained her balance and waved the camera at him while yelling something. Ove wasn't listening. He looked at the camera as if it were a weapon, and then decided to flee person was clearly not a reasonable person. So the cat and Ove stepped out the door, locked it, and headed off as quick as they could toward the parking area. The journalist woman jogged along behind them. To be absolutely clear about it, though, no part of this bears any relation to why Ove is now sitting outside the hospital. But when Parvana stood knocking on the door of Ove's house 15 minutes or so later, holding her three-year-old by the hand, and when no one opened and then she heard voices from the parking area, this, so to speak, has a good deal to do with Ove sitting outside the hospital. Parvin and the child came around the corner of the parking area and saw Ove standing outside his closed garage door with his hands sullenly shoved into his pockets. The cat was sitting at his feet, looking guilty. What are you doing? said Parvina. Nothing, said Ove defensively. Some knocking sounds were coming from the inside of the garage door. What was that? said Parvina, staring at it with surprise. Ove suddenly seemed extremely interested in a particular section of the asphalt under one of his shoes. The cat looked a bit as if it were about to start whistling and trying to walk away. Another knock came from the inside of the garage door. Hello, said Parvina. Hello, answered the garage door. Parvina's eyes widened. Christ, have you locked someone in the garage, Ove? Ove didn't answer. Parvina shook him as if trying to dislodge some coconuts. Ove! Yes, yes, but I didn't do it on purpose, for God's sake, he muttered and wriggled out of her grip. Parvina shook her head. Not on purpose? No, not on purpose, said Ove, as if this should wrap up the discussion. When he noticed that Parvina was obviously expecting some sort of clarification, he scratched his head and sighed. Her, well, 
She's one of those journalist people. It wasn't bloody me who locked her in. I was going to lock myself and the cat in there, but then she followed us, and, you know, things took their course. Parvanet started massaging her temples. I can't deal with this. Naughty, said the three-year-old, and shook her finger at Ove. Hello, said the garage door. There's no one here, Ove hissed back. But I can hear you, said the garage door. Ove sighed and looked despondently at Parvana, as if he was about to exclaim, You hear that? Even the garage doors are talking to me these days. Parvana waved him aside, walked up to the door, leaned her face up close, and knocked tentatively. The door knocked back, as if it expected to communicate by Morse code from now on. Parvana cleared her throat. Why do you want to talk to Ove, she said, relying on the conventional alphabet. He's a hero. Uh, what? Okay, sorry. So, my name is Lena. I work at the local newspaper, and I want to interview Parvana looked at Ove in shock. What does she mean, a hero? She's just prattling on, Ove protested. He saved a man's life. He'd fallen on the track, hailed the garage door. You sure you've got the right Ove, said Parvana? Ove looked insulted. I see. So now it's out of the question that I could be a hero, is it? He muttered. Parvana peered at him suspiciously. The three-year-old tried to grab hold of what was left of the cat's tail with an excitable kitty. Kitty did not look particularly impressed by this and tried to hide behind Ove's legs. What have you done, Ove, said Parvana in a low, confidential voice, taking two steps away from the garage door. The three-year-old chased the cat around his feet. Ove tried to figure out what he should do with his hands. Aha, so I hauled the suit off the rails. It's nothing to make a bloody fuss about, he mumbled. Parvana tried to keep a straight face. Would have a giggle about it, actually, said Ove sourly. Sorry, said Parvana. The garage door called out something that sounded like, Hello, are you still there? No, Ove bellowed. Why are you so terrifically angry? The garage door wondered. Ove was starting to look hesitant. He leaned towards Parvana. I... Don't know how to get rid of her, he said, and if Parvana had not known better, she might have concluded there was something pleading in his eyes. I don't want her in there on her own with a sob, he whispered gravely. Parvana nodded in confirmation of the unfortunate aspects of the situation. Obey lowered a tired, meditating hand between the three-year-old and the cat before that situation went out of control around his shoes. The three-year-old looked as if she was ready to try to hug the cat. The cat looked as if it was ready to pick out the three-year-old from a lineup at a police station. Obey managed to catch the three-year-old, who burst into peals of laughter. Why are you here in the first place, Ove demanded of Parvana, as he handed over the little bundle like a sack of potatoes. We're taking the bus to the hospital to pick up Patrick and Jimmy, she answered. She saw the way Ove's face twitched above his cheekbones when she said, bus. We, Parvana began, as if articulating the beginnings of a thought. She looked at the garage door, then looked at Ove. I can't hear what you're saying. Talk louder, yelled the garage door. Ove immediately took two steps away from it. At once, Parvana smiled confidently at him, as if she had just worked out the solution to a crossword. Hey, Ove, how about this? If you give us a lift to the hospital, I'll help you get rid of this journalist, okay? Ove looked up. He didn't look a bit convinced. Parvana threw out her arms. Or I'll tell the journalist that I can tell a story or two about you, Ove, she said, raising her eyebrows. Story? What story? The garage called out and started banging in an excitable manner. Ove looked dejectedly at the garage door. This is blackmail, he said desperately to Parvana. Parvana nodded cheerfully. Ove attacked a clown, said the three-year-old, and nodded and initiated away at the cat, clearly because she felt that Ove's aversion to the hospital needed further explanation to whoever was not there the last time they went. The cat seemed not to know what this meant, but if the clown had been anywhere near as tiresome as this three-year-old, the cat didn't take an entirely negative view of Ove hitting someone. And so this is the reason why Ove is sitting here now. The cat looks personally let down by Ove for making him travel all the way in the back seat with a three-year-old. Ove adjusts the newspapers on the seats. He feels he's been tricked. When Parvana said she'd get rid of the journalist, he didn't have a very clear idea of exactly how she'd manage it. Obviously, he didn't have expectations of the woman being conjured away in a puff of smoke or knocked out with a spade or buried in the desert or anything of that kind. In fact, the only thing Parvana had done was to open the garage door, give that journalist a card, and say, call me. And we'll talk about Ove. Is that really a way of getting rid of anyone? Ove didn't doesn't think, properly speaking, it's a, that it's a way of getting rid of anyone at all. But now it's too late, of course. Now, damn it, he's sitting here waiting outside the hospital for the third time in less than a week. Blackmail. That's what it is. Added to this, Ove has the cat's resentful stares to contend with. Something in its eyes reminds him of the way Sonia used to look at him. They won't be coming to take Rune away. They say they're going to do it, but they'll be busy with the process for many years, says Ove to the cat. Maybe he's also saying it to Sonia, and maybe to himself. He doesn't know. At least stop feeling so sorry for yourself. If it wasn't for me, you'd be living with the kid, and then you wouldn't have much of what left of what you have now for a tale. Think about that, he snorts at the cat, in an attempt to change the subject. The cat rolls onto its side, away from Ove, and goes to sleep in protest. Ove looks out the window again. He knows very well that three-year-old isn't allergic at all. He knows very well that Parvin just lied to him, so she wouldn't have to take care of the cat annoyance. He's not some bloody, senile, old man.